Hello, Duelists! Russ Mero here, and today we are going to be opening the brand new main booster set in the Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG, Cybernetic Horizon! Okay, 30 packs, let's go! Unlike my previous main booster box openings for Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, for this one, I'm gonna try doing it in one video instead of splitting it in half, so you guys can enjoy it all the way till the end. So here we are getting into our first pack, starting off with a brand new Goki Monster, Goki Moon Salt. Now we've got one of the brand new Palladian Archetypes, Palladian of 100 Beasts, Psycho Ace, Cybernetic Overflow, and our rare will be one of the new Ritual Support Monsters, Kandor. Now moving on to the second pack. So what exactly does this Cybernetic Horizon pack contain? Well, it basically represents the shift between Season 1 and Season 2 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains anime, so we'll be seeing a lot of cards from the finale of the first season, including some that Yusaku will use in the second season. And now, uh, continuing the Palladian with Palladian of Magic Realm, the new reprint of the old uh, ritual monster, Angel of Destruction Ruin, Restoration Point Guard, Dealer's Choice, and our rare- Oh, we are getting the other uh, ritual support monster rare, which is Talis Mandra. And like, the Mandra is supposed to be short for Mandragora. Now moving on to the third pack. So yeah, as you guys can already you guys probably already know this from the front of the pack, but the main card to get from this set is really the brand new Cybers Ritual Monster, Cybers Magician, which is super awesome. Really looking forward to that. And here another Palladian. Yeah, cause oh, and right after that we're getting the next Palladian as well. And whoa, one of the new Goki Links, Shadow Ogre. Endless of the World. This is gonna be the ritual spell used to summon the reprints of and uh, Ruin and Demise. And up next, we are going, going to suddenly get a Dragunity card, like Sudden Legacy Support. Dragunity Senate. Senator. Yeah, so definitely looking forward to getting that uh, Cybers Ritual in the form of Cybers Magician. Like, I mean, every single Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonist gets their own Magician, and we didn't really see one for Yusaku at first, although we did get Cybers Wizard, so it's really cool to like finally see it coming here. And here we have Cluster Congester, Cyber Dragon Fia. And now here we have the Devil of the End Demise, Dragunity Drive, and another rare copy of Talis Mandra. So moving on to the next pack, yeah. Alright. So here we are getting another form of Dragunity Legacy support, another new Dragunity in the form of Dragunity Kuze. And ah, Metaphys Decoy Dragon, a support for another old archetype as well. Restoration Point Guard, and oh, our first super rare. Let's see if there's anything special behind it. Okay, well, basically, our rare is another copy of the Dragunity Senator. And our first super rare will be the Beautiful Goddess of Destruction Ruin. So, that's a really nice looking card there. Really cool to see like the return of support for ritual monsters into the game suddenly at this point after we've shifted into the Link era, especially like we printed new versions of like these old monsters like Demise and Ruin. So basically her first effect allows her to be treated as the original Ruin card. When this ritual summon monster is on the field, all of your ritual monsters can't be destroyed by effects. And if you only use ritual monsters to ritual summon her, she's able to conduct two attacks in each battle phase. And finally, whenever she destroys an opponent's monster, you can inflict the original attack power of that opponent's monster to your opponent as damage. So a pretty sick, powerful and damaging card, but unfortunately, I don't think I will be using her much because I have never really been into the ritual archetype and like ritual archetypes like the Gishki all that to be honest with you guys, but uh, because I play a bit of Cybers, I am planning on trying out the new Cybers wizard, but the new uh, ritual cards, I guess I'll collect them, but I don't think I'll really be playing them much. Yeah, so... The cards that I've already pulled, I'm just gonna skip past them. Here's a new one, it's going to be a continuous spell called Magic Lab, which is basically a powerful spell for the Magic Beast archetype. And oh yes, this is one of the rest I definitely want to pull from this set. And it's Knight of Storm Dragon, because, I mean, just check out that art artwork, it's so cool with like a knight, a Cybers Knight riding on top of Fireball Dragon like that, and I guess it's sort of like a callback and a reference to the Knight of Blue Eyes White Dragon, the one that allows you to special summon Blue Eyes. So it's really pretty cool to like check out a card like that. Of course, I don't think this one lets you uh, special summon Firewall Dragon instantly. Alright, and now we've got another new Goki, Goki 2 Platon. Cosmo Brain. Wow. Shot Barrel Dragon, one of Revolver's fishy gun monsters they used at the finale. Beast Magic, quick play spell, and... Okay. 
Okay. I think, yes, from the foil looking through the camera, I believe we have just pulled our ultimate rare and I'm really glad that it's going to be the brand new Link support for the Cyber Dragon archetype. And this is Cyber Dragon Zeger. So just like all the other uh, Cyber Dragon copies, its first effect basically allows it to be treated as Cyber Dragon when it's on the field or in the graveyard. This card name's second effect can only be activated once per turn. During a battle phase, either yours or your opponent's, where this monster didn't attack, you can target one of your machine-type monsters that has at least 2,100 attack and increase it, both its attack and defense by 2,100. And until the end of the turn after you activate this effect, all battle damage involving this Cyber Dragon Zeger will be nullified. So that's quite interesting because due to the damage nullification, you can use it both as a offensive offensive skill to like power up your other monsters as well as defensively when your opponent target this monster in order to negate the battle damage. So that's pretty nice. Starting off strong already pulling our secret rare before touching any of the ultra rares, but pretty nice to be able to pull Cyber Dragon because I mean come on, anybody who's like played Yu-Gi-Oh for a long time. I mean, Cyber Dragon is just a card with so much feel, so much retro there from the GX era. Now we've got Goki Hell Trainer, another one of Omizuka's new cards. Majindo, I think that loosely translates to like Child of the Devil God. Now we got another Ruin, common version, Sword of Vile Venom. And oh, what is this? Well, this is an Ultra Rare. I mean, for, oh, I, oh, this, oh, this. All right, all right. 3000 attack, Link 4, look at the design, uh, it, it, because the colour is a bit hard to see so I didn't manage to like recognise it instantly but this is Barrel Sword Dragon, one of the two new Barrel Swords, I mean you guys should know if you guys watch the anime, anime Barrel Sword, Barrel Guard Dragon, Revolver just pulled them out of his ass in the final battle against Yusaku, super awesome cards, can't believe I actually managed to pull one as an ultra rare. So this monster has quite a number of sick effects. First of all, it can't be destroyed by battle. Secondly, it has a targeting effect just like barrel load in order to like set off your violet monsters on your field. But instead of reducing attack and defense by 500, this one changes an attack position monster to defense position. Of course, your opponent can't activate effects in response to that effect and you can use it both on your turn and your opponent's turn. Finally, this guy's got some Dark Rebellion shit going on down here. When he declares an attack against an opponent's monster, you can activate its effect to allow it to gain half the opponent's attack while reducing the opponent's attack power by half. So, really sick card, really powerful with a really awesome design as well. Um, actually, at first I wasn't really planning on trying out Valets, but after seeing Revolver kick Playmaker's ass so badly in the final duel of Season 1, I've got pretty interested in playing Valets myself, so I may be able to try out that monster in a future deck. So, I guess I'll just have to see about that. And now moving on to the next pack. Now we're just going through more old cards as well. Oh, and here we've got uh, a Link Palladian, Regrex Palladian, the Link 2 of the new archetype, and zero extra Link. If you guys watch the anime, you guys will know that this is the bullshit. Oh, okay, let, let me talk about this first. So we're also getting some more random like Synchro Dragunity support, Legacy support, and this is going to be Dragunity Knight. Haroon. So let's put that aside now. While I continue to bitch about Zero Extra Link. So if you guys watch the anime, you guys will know that Zero Extra Link was the bullshit card that Yusaku suddenly pulled out of his ass on the final turn and used it to absolutely destroy Revolver with like no skill required at all. So it's a card I I don't really like it as a card even though its effect is completely different in the actual game. I, I just don't like what it did. I just feel like it completely... Oh! Yes, yes, yes! Uh, Oh, wow, alright, so our rare is Goki the Giant Ogre, unfortunately they decided not to foil this card, but really cool to pull it, I really like how, like, how Onizuka actually used it against Revolver, it was pretty cool. And now our next super rare, our second super rare in fact, is gonna be the Emperor of World, uh, World End, Demise, so it's gonna be a super rare I believe, yes, so we got a super rare of this one and a super rare of Ruin as well. So very similar to Ruin, this card on the field is treated the same as uh, the original Demise from like way back when original Dual Monsters era. Uh, when this uh, Ritual Summon monster is on the field, all of your Ritual Monsters can't be destroyed by battle. Once per turn, you can pay 2000 life in order to destroy every other card on the field except Demise and then inflict 200 damage to your opponent for each of your opponent's cards destroyed this way. But if you ritual summon this guy with only ritual monsters, there is no cost for that effect, which sounds pretty badass if you ask me, and I actually love the design of this card. Like, actually looking back, the original Demise was really cool looking also, but he just really topped it up here, and wow, he just looks so badass right now. So uh, even though he's a ritual and I'm not really interested in like using him and coming up with a deck for him, just really tempting me so much, so that'll be cool. It'll be cool if he comes out in Duel Links, because I don't think he's like 
that OP to be put in like the old format. So con continuing on with our packs, just quickly go through this pack before. Oh, Shield Handler, Yusaku Yuzen, and the final duel as well. And oh, so this is gonna be a new League Monster for the Jack Knights now appearing as a rare, a Jack Knight of the Morning Sun. His design looks a bit weird compared to the other Jack Knights though, like not as cool, so not sure how I feel about that. Maybe he'll be relevant to the story, not too sure. Okay, so continuing my rant about Zero Extra Link, like the whole feel I got from Vrains from episode 1 until like the latest episode. Oh, High Cupid, a new card as well. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. This, this booster box opening isn't giving me time to talk about anything. So, our rare is actually gonna be a Brandish Maiden card, Hayate. So, it's interesting. I wasn't expecting them to add any Brandish Maidens to this, uh, this new main booster, especially. I thought they were just gonna reserve them for the. How was it? The. Boost SP, the deck build pack I mean, but yeah, I think she's just rare, I sort of mistook her for a fawn right there, but yeah, like, the whole of Reigns, like, they've been hyping Yusaku up as a guy who's like, you know, really uses his head, and knows how to think calmly and rationally, and come up with the best strategy to deal with each situation, just like, you know, Yusei, yeah, so, like, they really, it really, like, sort of hyped him up to be, like, a really skilled duelist, like Yusei, so, I was really hoping that in the final duel against Revolver, like, that he would fight Revolver, like, hit to hit, like, both trying to counter each other with mad skills and crazy strategies, super combos, which Revolver definitely lived up to our expectations with his extra link, but Yusaku, like, that turn where he, like, at the start of the duel where he brought out basically a lot of, um, a lot of, what were they, a lot of the talkers, it was pretty cool, but, like, the way he ended the duel, I just felt like it was very unskilled, it was really, like, uh, just pulling something out of his ass like that, so I didn't really like that, and yes, you guys can say that, uh, like, Top decking is a thing that really happens in the Yu-Gi-Oh anime a lot, but even the normal top decks, like, there's some skill to them, like, the, the card is just right for the situation, but it somehow combos well with what you've, like, set up on the field. But in the case of... Oh, yes! Alright, alright. So, yeah, so this card is gonna be... I think I skipped her just now, but yeah, this is gonna be a reprint of that old card that actually support, supports the Monsters of the Dark attribute. So by having her on the field, you, like, give stat boost to all your Dark Monsters. But here, our next super rare is gonna be Cyber's Witch. So this monster's first and second effects can only be used once per turn. Basically, she's programmed to be an engine for summoning a uh, Cyber's Magician. Her first effect is when a monster is special summoned to a link, you can banish a spell from the grave in order to add a, a Cyber's Ritual monster as well as Cybernet Ritual from your deck to your hand. And the second effect is during the main phase of the turn you activated that first effect, you can target a level 4 or lower Cybers monster in your grave and special summon it. So that's a pretty cool interaction there, it's sort of like how Gagaga -ga Girl sort of supports Gagaga -ga Magician and now Cybers Witch is sort of able to uh, support Cybers Magician in a way. Alright, so moving into our last 15 packs, I just counted and we've got 3 supers, 1 ultra and 1 secret so far, so we've still got plenty of awesome foils to pull from this set. Of course, I don't think I mentioned it in this video so far, but you guys may know already, but there's a special rarity in this set known as the 20th Anniversary Secret Rare, so I'm definitely hoping to pull something like that. And we have basically seen most of the cards already, so I guess I can sort of uh, go faster now, and this is gonna, uh, gonna be our rare, Riplo Dockers. Pretty cool? Yeah. So, oh, yeah, I think I skipped over that, but uh, before Ripple Dockers, the card that we pulled was actually the Ritual card that's supposed to be used together with Ruin and Demise. So that's pretty nice as well. I guess it's a common, but we've only managed to pull one so far. Maybe if we pull multiple copies of it, I'll be able to like test it out in real life. So moving on, let's see what else we get. Oh, yes! Okay. Okay, it's not 20th Anniversary Secret Rare, but we did it. We did it, and yes, yes, I'm pretty sure this is ultra rare. We just pulled the super rare Cyber's Witch, and now we've pulled the ultra rare Cyber's Magician. So I think Cyber's Magician is really interesting because it's sort of like a really balanced card. I mean, just like the original Dark Magician, I mean, level, stats, all the same. But yeah, let's go through his effects first. So his first effect is basically as long as he's in a monster zone, as long as he's in a monster zone, all the damage you receive is half. Secondly, as long as there are link monsters on your field, your opponent cannot target your other non-link monsters or target them with effects. Thirdly, this Cyber's Magician gains 1,000 attack when he's battling a link monster, which will bring it up to 3,500, higher than all of the Veril. So I need to be honest with you guys, I was really expecting Yusaku to pull this guy out in the final battle against Revolver and just smash all the topologics and Vorals on the field. And finally, when this card is destroyed by your opponent's effect, you. Can can add a Cybers monster from your deck to your hand. So really interesting card, I really love the design of Cybers Magician 
as well is really reminiscent of like the original magician but now he has green hair which is sort of like it fits the like futuristic feel better and like he just really gives a lot of good support to the cybers archetype as a whole I feel. Unfortunately he is a ritual monster so I'm not sure how well he will work out in like real duels cause I think he's gonna like for cybers your hand your hand size is really important because you need to expand so much hand in order to like do all your cool combos. So I'm not sure how like the hand expenditure is gonna work out in the long run for this deck. And oh, pretty cool, a brand new crawler support card. Been waiting for that. Yeah, another one of the dark attribute supports. Yeah. So yes, what else is there to talk about? Well, hopefully we still manage to get that 20th anniversary secret rare. I'm not sure if you guys know what it looks like, but it's sort of like a super souped up version of secret rare and with like the Yu-Gi-Oh 20th anniversary symbol over there down on the effect tags, all in like hologramming and stuff. And here we've got Hyperstar, which is similar to the Dark Booster uh, Link Monster, but this one is for light attribute. Yeah. And so, hmm. As for the other new cards that are present in this set, I'm sure you guys have seen like a bunch of the legacy support already. Like we just saw Crawlers, there was Mech Knights also and even Dragunity. There's also a new support card for Neo Space I believe. But in terms of new uh, archetypes, we've got the new like ritual support stuff. The Oh, okay. Oh my god, I was I did not know they were gonna turn this into an actual card. And oh well, our first our rare first is Cybernet Ritual, really nice. Now we can summon our Cybers Magician, but our super rare is that stupid Mirror Force launcher. I have no idea why Konami felt that it was necessary to give Mirror Force more support, but let's get into this. So Mirror Force launcher is a continuous trap card. Once per turn, you can discard a monster from your hand in order to add Mirror Force from your... You can add one copy of Mirror Force from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Secondly, when this card is destroyed by your opponent's effect and sent to the graveyard, you can take this card as well as one copy of Mirror Force from your deck, hand or graveyard set both of them and they can be activated during the turn they were set this way so yeah I, I don't know why they thought it was a good idea that card's definitely not gonna appear in dual links that's just bullshit like i mean i know that i mean people don't really play mirror force that much nowadays because like there are ways to get around it but like but still like is it was it really necessary to give mirror force a buff like that i have no idea what they were thinking and yeah our, our next red is cyber Rev system, so it's gonna looks like it's gonna be a spell support card. More legacy support for Cyber Dragons, which is always nice. I feel like Cyber Dragon is that one archetype where they always have to give legacy support to it in like every new format. But I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Like I always like seeing the new Cyber Dragons. At least nothing will turn out to be like Cyber Dragon Infinity. I hate that card. <laughs> or at least I hate fighting that card. All right. So moving on. Let's see. Palladians. Yeah, Palladians. Oh shit. What? Is this demonic dragon of madness? So this beast is apparently called Dark Crystal Dragon Gildoras. So this card name's effect can only be used once per turn. Basically, if this card is in your hand or the graveyard, if one of your spell or traps is removed from the field by your opponent's effect, either sent to the graveyard or banished, you can special summon this card. After that, you can select a spell or trap from your graveyard or your banished cards and then set it. This mod, this special, the mod, when this monster is special summoned by this effect, banish it when it leaves the field, so that you can't abuse it, of course. But I mean, not too sure what I feel about the effect. I feel like it's he's sort of like indirect support for Mirror Force launcher and Mirror Force as well. But his design is just so good, even though his stats are kind of weak and his level is a bit low. For those of you guys who like I happen to follow Buddy Fight as well, this guy sort of reminds me of Bats from the brand new Buddy Fight X. So it's pretty cool, looking pretty awesome with like those dark magic circles over there. Let's carry on with this booster box opening. So yeah, uh, I guess the main key uh, new archetype that comes in this set is the Palladians, which is a world legacy archetype. And they feel sort of like an upgraded rehash. Oh, another copy of Cybernet Ritual. But yeah, they sort of feel like an upgraded rehash of uh, the original uh, World Chalice Star Grail archetype. They, they sort of have like the same functionality or like the same pattern where of trying to like gain advantage of the, over the opponent where they sort of like link summon in a stepwise manner meaning they like summon link one then they summon another they special summon another monster then they go link two and they special summon another monster and they go link three all in one turn so that reminds me a lot of like the original play style of the first world legacy archetype the star Girl one so it's sort of interesting so maybe the future oh, let me try and get this done with us so maybe the future world legacy archetypes you will see from this point are actually going to be like reflections of the original one which I'm really happy for because that means 
the next booster we might see like an upgraded new version of the crawlers or maybe like the spiritual oh okay our next super rare is a pretty cool looking card our rare is return of the world one of the new support spell traps for the demise and ruins so this super rare is going to be cyber dragon health so it's pretty simple support su legacy support card for the Cyber Dragons. First effect, of course, lets it be treated as Cyber Dragon on the field and the grave. Either this card name second or third effect can only be activated once per turn. So if you activate the second one, you can't activate this card name's third one anymore. Its second effect, when this card is successfully special summoned, you can make its level 5 until the end of the turn. But during the after that, you can only special summon machine type monsters for the rest of the turn. So interesting to play around with rank and stuff like that. It's third effect when this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add a cyber dragon other than this card from your deck or your graveyard to your hand. So typical support stuff for cyber dragons. I mean, getting those level fives for those annoying rank fives. Oh, I'm sick of all that stuff. Okay, so. It actually feels like we are still lacking quite a few epic pulls because most of what we've pulled so far are super rare so I'm really looking forward to what we'll be able to pull in the remaining few packs we have left and wait to see so... Oh! And we're gonna have a rare here which is gonna be the Too Deep uh, Graveyard Hole so that's a pretty funny card there and up next we only have 4 packs left I believe we are still lacking 1 Ultra and 1 Secret I am not sure if one box is guaranteed to get the Pentier secret, but huh, I guess we will just have to keep opening the find out. This is the fourth last pack, and it's a link. No. All right, so this is gonna be an ordinary secret rare, which is really nice. We managed to pull another copy of Cyber Dragon Ziga, which is looking really awesome in this secret rare. Don't get me wrong, he looks really badass here, but. If you guys have been following my openings by now, you guys know how I feel about repeat pulls and oh my god, pulling the same card for your ultimate and your secret, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to feel happy or, or like devastated but I think he looks a lot better than secret especially because he's like a machine type so maybe I'll keep the secret and sell the ultimate so who knows. And no card here, no fall here as well, our rare is Sim Tablas and we're left with only two packs. Alright, so I believe, uh, if I'm not wrong by my counts, we still lack one Ultra, so let's see what our final Ultra will be. I sure damn hope it's not gonna be another Cyber Dragon Ziger. I'm not even sure what his original rarity is. Alright, alright, oh, that's pretty nice, and our next rare is a Palladian of the Vast Guy, and for those of you guys who follow the World Legacy Law, you'll recognize him as Avram. I think a time skip has happened since the events of Flames of Destruction, so that's pretty cool to think about. And now finally, the moment of truth, the final pack. Let's see what we get. The Fizz Decoy Dragon, Link Default. It's just a super rare? Alright, and our final rare is actually going to be a uh, World Legacy world, uh, world Crown or maybe Star Relic Star Crown if you for the OCG But our final super rare is going to be the Dark Spirit God Obru Mirage So this card cannot be normal summon, it can only be special summoned by banishing 5 dark attribute monsters from your graveyard This card name's first effect can only be used fun once per turn When it's successfully special summoned you can add a monster with 1,500 or less attack from your deck to your hand. Secondly, when this face-up monster leaves the field, you are forced to skip the battle phase of your next turn. So, okay, first I have to say that this is a really badass looking card. It's like a knight in dark armor with like a huge ton of black and gold blades, which looks super badass, but I don't know, skipping my next battle phase, not too sure about this guy, but I don't think I'll be using him much anyway. So that'll be the end of this Cybernetic Horizon opening. If you guys enjoyed this opening, don't forget to give this video a like and let me know in the comment section down below how hyped you guys are for this set as well as the second season of Reigns. From what I'm seeing so far, really looking forward to the new episodes in the future. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for Yu-Gi-Oh! Booster Box openings on the day of release. Our next release will be the Collector's Pack 2018, which will release sometime around mid-May, which will feature the chance to finally pull Topologic Gambler Dragon. So with that, Hope to see you guys in the next Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Let's access the spin, it's swirling, data stone.
In a window, in our hearts are made to the